Welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, I want to show you how you can create HDR panoramic images. For the purpose of this video, this will be done with the camera raw editor in Photoshop. But keep in mind, this can be done in Lightroom as well. So if you want to follow along, you can find all the raw files in the description of the video. And now let's go. So you can see I have opened up Photoshop. First, of course, I do want to load all those HDR images into it. Here we have all the raw files needed. I have shot the HDR panorama vertically with three bracketed shots for each vertical image. So to open them up, I'm just selecting them all, place them in Photoshop by drag and drop. Photoshop will then open up the HDR sequence in the camera raw editor. By the way, in case you are wondering why do we need HDR, looking at the histogram in this example you can see we do have underexposure and overexposure and there's pretty much no way to fix it properly without affecting one or another. To counter that we are going to blend differently exposed images, one for the shadows, one for the highlights and one kind of in the middle of both. And this will give us a much higher dynamic range so we can get all the details we need for the highlights and the shadows and thus we will be creating a very clear image. So to do that I will need to select all the images down below. So I have selected the first one already. Let's go all the way to the right side, hold down the shift key and click on the thumbnail to select all of them. Once we have done that, just right click on one of the thumbnails and say merge to HDR panorama. So since we're working with quite a lot of huge raw files, this will take a while depending on your system. But once the camera raw editor has done its work, you can see the preview image right here. You can make it a little bigger if you want. And this is looking pretty good for a panoramic image. We don't lose too much from the sky or from the bottom part. If we want, we can of course use the boundary warp just to fill those gaps. But I don't really recommend it since it's usually distorting the horizon and it looks really, really strange. So I just leave it at zero. I'm also not changing anything with the projection. I also don't like to apply auto settings or auto crop since I can do that myself. Just to have some more control here. That means once that preview has loaded, I'm just hitting the merge button. So after that we end up with an image like this. Of course it still looks super dark and we can actually see some underexposure happening. But first off, let's crop the image. So I just got rid of a bit of the right side. It's not that interesting anyway. Uh, at the moment I'm not sure if I want to keep the tree centered. But for now let's just leave it at that point. The gaps on the left side will be filled later with Photoshop so don't worry about them for now. So after cropping the image, let's also change the profile to Adobe Landscape, which will give us some more base saturation and I think this looks pretty good for a sunset image. Then I do want to adjust the white balance. At the moment you can see it's a little heavy on the yellow side. So I do want to bring down the temperature without losing too much of that warm color tones, especially around the sun. But that's looking pretty good. Also, I might want to get rid of the tint here, just like that, just so we get some more natural colors for our base image. Then let's work on the exposure. Since we have created an HDR image, this means we can pull up the exposure quite a bit without losing image quality, which is so helpful as you can see. So let's just turn it up and you can see how we get details back in the very darkest shadows. But of course, that is way too bright. So. Let's bring it down a notch. I think that's a good spot. You can see the underexposure is now gone, but of course we do have some overexposure right there around the sun. Not a big deal however, we can just bring down the highlights. And since this is an HDR image, we have lots of details to work with. So now you can see the overexposure is completely eliminated and the sun area looks actually pretty good, which is normally not the case when not working with HDR. Now at this point I still want to work on the shadows. That means I want to raise them because I quite like the details in the shadows in the tree here. So that is looking very, very good. Also I do want to bring up the whites to make the whole scene a little brighter. And I guess I also want to bring up the blacks. 
which helps giving the image some kind of soft look. So let's compare to before. You can see a huge difference. There's no overexposure, there's no underexposure, and all in all the image just looks very good. Next up, let's introduce some texture. And I also want to introduce some dehaze for some contrast. Uh, but I'm using very low values here because I don't want to overdo it. Then let's bring up the vibrance since as I said, I want this image to be saturated. Also, I can bring up the saturation itself. Maybe just a bit. Okay. And here we are done with the base adjustments. Next up, let's do some local adjustments. First off, I do want to change the bright area on the left side. That means I want to add some glow around the sun. And just for your information, I guess there will be some overexposure after those adjustments. But I think in cases like this, it's okay to have some overexposure. So let's choose radial gradient and create a really big one just here and place it right on top of the sun. In here, I'm going to push the blacks and I do want to change the colors in here as well. So let's use the color box right there. And I am going with the warm color tone, of course, maybe here, but let's use a low saturation, just like that. Perfect. Then I do want to add another radial gradient, this time a little smaller, but again, I'm dropping it right on the sun. And again, I want to increase the blacks. This time I'm also going to increase the shadows just to make the effect a little stronger. And on top of that, I'm going to drop the dehaze. Now at this point, overexposure really starts to come in. But since it's only concentrated on that area, for me personally, it's okay. I just want to have this heavy glow effect around the sun. Alright, then there's one last thing I want to do and that is to darken the top of the sky. Therefore, I am going to create a select sky mask. So looking at it, it does seem to work rather good. Still, I want to subtract a good chunk of this mask on the left side because it doesn't make sense to make the sky here darker. So let's hit subtract, linear gradient, and then let's just subtract this area from the left side, just like that. And in here, I'm going to bring down the blacks. I also want to increase the contrast. This also helps to get some structure in those clouds. And also I can increase the clarity to further improve this effect. All right, perfect. And that's it for the local adjustments. Again, let's compare to before. You can see especially the area around the sun now has this very, very strong glow effect. Of course, that's a personal thing, but I really, really like this effect. So let's keep on going with the color grading. In the color mixer, I do want to work on the saturation a bit. Uh, mainly I want to bring up the orange saturation. I also want to bring up the green tones. And let's drop the blue saturation. I don't want the blue tones to overtake the whole image, so that's the reason behind dropping the blue saturation. Then for the luminance, I am going to drop the blue luminance just to make the top part of the sky a little darker again. But that looks really good. Then the split toning in the color grading tab. I'm starting with the highlights. And of course, since we are working with the sunset shot, I'm going to add a warm color to the highlights. Uh, let's see. That's looking like a good spot. Uh, let's bring up the saturation though. I want to make it quite warm. So at that point, it's good, I think. For the midtones, I do want to add a cold color tone, however. Actually, let's maybe go into the pink range. But of course, let's bring down the saturation. Just like that. Then for the shadows, I am going with a very cold tone just around here and use a very, very low saturation. All right, perfect. Finally, let's head down into the calibration tab. 
Here I just want to drop the blue primary Q. And let's boost the saturation here. Perfect, and then we are done with the raw adjustments. I actually don't want to sharpen this image at that point, maybe later in Photoshop, however. So once we're done with the raw adjustments, of course we want to open it up in Photoshop. Alright, and the first thing I want to do is to clean up the image a little bit. That means I'm also going to apply some cropping, since I'm not that happy with the right side. So let's just crop it like this, maybe. Then let's zoom in, use the spot healing brush and just get rid of a few objects. And of course I also want to fill the gaps which were caused by the panoramic image. So here I'm just using the lesser tool, make a rough selection around them, hit shift F5, select content aware and hit OK. So on the bottom part it's a little more tricky. And for that bigger tree I'm using the clone stem tool. I'm just copying an area from right next to it. So that looks much cleaner. Next up I do want to enhance the colors a little bit. So let's go into the adjustment layers and here choose photo filter. And I do want to bring up the density quite a bit. So this effect looks really really good on the brighter parts of the image, but not so good on the rest of the image. That means I'm going to select the layer mask and hit Ctrl I to invert it. And then I'm using a white brush and just paint back in the effect over those brighter areas. Just like that. Then next up let's work on some more glow, therefore I'm creating a new layer. Switch the blending mode to soft light. Again, use the brush tool, but let's bring down the brush opacity to around 10% maybe. And you can see I'm using a very, very warm color tone right there. So with a big soft brush, I'm just painting in a little more glow. Just like that. Perfect. And I have the feeling this image is still lacking a little bit of saturation. So let's use another adjustment layer, this time go with Vibrance and just bring up the Vibrance here. Okay, that is looking pretty good already. Now I do want to merge all those layers, so at this point be careful because I'm working very destructively. If you want you can create a smart object out of this. I'm just going to merge them as they are. So I'm going to hit Ctrl E and got a single layer out of it. At this point I do want to check the Nick Collection plugin for some more effects. And I do want to start with the polarization effect. You can see I already have chosen it. I have increased the strength quite a bit. So I however do want to add another filter. So let's do that. And I do want to introduce some more glow to this image by using uh, the glimmer glow effect. Let's restore some saturation here. And let's also add a little bit more glow. And I do want to add some negative control points just for the tree because I want that to be sharp. So like this. Let's add another one right there. And maybe right here. Actually I think I need to reduce the glow again. But that's looking really really good. So let's apply it like this. Okay we're almost done. Just one more thing I want to change and that's the overall brightness. At the moment it looks rather dark. I mean the histogram looks good but I still want to change that. So again let's head into the adjustment layer menu and here we're choosing levels. Here I want to bring down the point for the highlights quite a bit just to make everything brighter but of course we will end up with some heavy overexposure. In that case we just need to mask out the area using a black brush. Make sure to set the brush opacity back to 100. And then let's just brush over this bright spot. So that's looking much much better. And at this point I'm done with editing. So I hope this video was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.